Welcome to Stock Talk with Mike. Today I want to talk about four things I think every investor should be doing to help them beat the market over the long term. And if we're going to be picking individual stocks, I really think that's got to be at least a baseline goal because otherwise we could just be buying ETF or index funds, tracking market average market returns. Our goal as individual investors should always be to beat the market like the S&P 500 index. And I think the information I'm going to provide today could be helpful to you. All right, so like most of you, I, I have a day job and I don't have endless time to devote to the market. But one thing I like to do is sit down with my morning coffee before even getting ready for work and quickly, I, it takes about half hour. There's a few things, my morning coffee routine, I like to do almost on a daily basis. And the first thing I like to do is open a site like briefing.com where you can view all the analyst upgrades and downgrades for the day. I find it really interesting to look at and it kind of can give you some sense to the price action for companies you're holding or ones in your watch list as well. So you can scroll like it's sorted here by upgrades, an interesting one on the day I filmed this on January 25th here, ones like this, like CrowdStrike by Summit Insights went from an upgrade from a sell to a buy. So not even to neutral, it's a double upgrade with a price target of 275. That's, that's, a, that's a really nice upgrade. So that'd be an interesting thing to look for. They also have the downgrade. So if you see a company selling off and you don't know why, that might be why. It's not necessarily something always fundamentally changed with the company in their eyes too. A lot of times you might see a company downgraded just because the stock price has gone up so much and it's above their price target now as well. Um, but so then you can see here like new coverage initiated. So some other firm may be covering the company now and you can see their price targets on it too. And uh, let's see here. Oh, and reiter price target changes. So analysts covering it, changing their price targets. Uh, a funny one here, look at Tesla by Robert Baird. They reiterated their outperform rating, upgrading their price target to 488 to 728. So that's a little useless because they're saying it's outperformed, but it's lower than today's price. So either that's out of whack or they're expecting the market to majorly sell off. But anyways, I find, I find the upgrades and downgrades incredibly useful and it helps me sort of uh, explore new company ideas as well as I see a, uh, sometimes you'll see a barrage of upgrades for a particular company and it might, it might be worth checking out a little further what, what's going on in the news with that company. The second thing I like to do is I like to plug all my, um, the, the stocks that I, that I have shares in, but then also companies in my watch list. I use an app like uh, Yahoo Finance here and I plug all the companies in and then I get all the pushed news feed so I can scroll that in the morning and just check on, on any new um, news that may be relevant to me that I want to I want to read. Some of the brokerage sites have really good news feeds as well. So depending on what brokerage you use, you might have access to that. But I generally just kind of scan uh, Yahoo Finance here so you can see like some 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 different news events. All right, number three. And I think this one's probably the most important one if you're going to do one of these and it's listen to the conference calls. I don't listen to every call, all four calls for every company I own every year, but if they're in like an inflection point or I'm concerned about the company or I have when it's one of my largest positions in my portfolio, you bet I'm gonna listen to those calls. But at the very least, you wanna at least scan the transcripts and have a read through those, but you get so much more out of listening to the executive team talk about their company. It can really add to your conviction or give you some red flags as well. Just listening to their tone. Um, it, it just, and then also be able to listen to the dialogue between the executive team and the analyst questions at the end can be so useful. But one thing I don't hear a lot of people talk about is you can actually, rather than go to the investor relations pages and try and weed through, try and see if their calls are listed, a lot of times there's not, you can actually go to this website, EarningsCast, and you can do this on your phone as well. And you can actually search by company. So I'll type in, I'll type in Square here and bring it up. And let's see here, go there. And you can actually click on any, you can go back in time and watch calls too, or listen to calls, sorry. So, you know, so you can listen to their conference call while mowing the lawn or whatever you want to do. But anyways, turn that off. But I find that incredibly 
useful tool to use. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. Fourth, another really good thing to check out is the 13F filings. So 13Fs are actually required for any money manager that is holding over $100 million in funds. They're required to report to the SEC quarterly on the stocks they're holding and their buys and sells and calls and puts. So it can be really insightful. The only issue is there can be a bit of a delay because they're only reporting quarterly. So by the time you see that report, that X, X money manager bought all these shares, they could have sold them already, depending, depending on the, uh, how active the money managers are. So there's a lot of sites you can check 13Fs. This is Whale Wisdom. Another decent one is Holdings Channel, which allows you to like sort by uh, money manager as well. And they have some like top 10 type, um, top 10 type lists as well. But on Whale Wisdom here, if I type in, again, I'll use Square again. And uh, yeah, there we go. I'll use Square. And here they give you a roll up of the buys and sells so you can see that 203 firms took a new position 312 last quarter increased their position 71 closed 340 reduced and if you scroll down further you can actually look at the individual buys and sells by firms so this can be really insightful if you see institutions buying up a company you're interested in that can be really good to add to your conviction you can also search by firm so we can type in here, say, Berkshire Hathaway. You want to see what Warren Buffett's doing. And you can see, you can see their top buys. So recently their top buys are AbbVie and Merck, Bristol-Myers, Squibb, Snowflake, as we all know about. Top sales, Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, sort of selling banks last quarter. And then interesting looking at their top holdings. Apple is 48% of their portfolio, Bank of America, 10%. So really insightful stuff to see what the big money managers are doing. And it can provide you a lot of insight into what's kind of going on behind the scenes with companies either on your watch list or that you, you're you currently holding. Um, you know, if you see if you see a, sell, a company that you're holding uh, being sold off by money managers, you might want to do a bit of a deeper dive to see what's going on and what fundamentally has changed about the company. There's a lot of easy money being made in the market right now, and that's fantastic for everyone involved. But I think in the long term, it's not always going to be that way. And there's going to be tough periods again. Um, and we all need that reality check that um, to, to be sustainably successful in the market it takes a lot of hard work and investing in quality companies and you need to continue to do your homework and it's really difficult if you're just buying those top picks you get from a youtuber or whatever without uh, doing additional work behind the scenes to add to your conviction it can be really difficult psychologically on yourself to what to do when we have those volatile times if you've done the research, you've done the homework, and the company you're holding drops 20%, you have a much clearer headspace about what to do with that company. Either hold it, or depending on its weight in your portfolio, maybe you want to buy more at that time. Versus if it's just a hot pick and you don't know much about the company, you might be panicked and think you want to sell before you lose it all. And same when it goes up a lot. If, if it's a company you don't know a lot about, you might want to ring the register really early. Versus if you've done a lot of homework and you feel like this company might be five times bigger than years from now, you might not be even thinking about taking profits unless it gets to too big of a position in your portfolio. So I think that conviction is so important and that comes with doing a lot of the hard work. You, when you just have that aha moment about a company that you feel good about owning, um, it's really a beautiful thing. <laughs> Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Hopefully you uh, found a, a new tool you could use to help with your investing success.